Despite public consternation, Nigeria's inflation rate drops for the first time in 19 months, according to a new report. Kaduna doctors protest and threatens nationwide action over seven-month abduction of member. Farmers in Adamawa count their losses due to limited rainfall. And on the international scene, World Health Organization warns of cholera resurgence in many countries globally. Good evening. Welcome to Trust News R. I am Sumaya Abubakar. And now let's head on with the details of the news. Nigeria's inflation figure recorded its first decline in 19 months, dropping to 33.40% in the month of July. A report by the National Bureau of Statistics, the NBS, stated that the drop when compared to the 34.19% recorded in June was 0.8% point. On a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 9.32% point higher compared to the rate recorded in July 2023, which was 24.8%. This shows that the year-on-year -year basis headline inflation rate increased in July 2024 compared to the same month in the preceding year. In added, added that on a basis of month-on-month -month basis, the headline inflation rate in July 2024 was 2.28%, which was 0.3% lower than the rate recorded in June 2024, which is 2.31%. It went on to state that food inflation rates in, is also reduced to 39.53% when compared to the 40% in June 2024. Now joining us via phone call to discuss the inflation figure is an economist, Yushao Aliyu. Good evening, Yushao. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Nigeria. Yeah, of course. So, you've seen the reports of the NBC, or NBS rather. So, do you think there's a direct correlation between these new figures and the reality on ground for Nigerians? Uh, it's, it's a welcome development. That is my first uh, opinion and comment because uh, that is what we have been looking for to see a drop either year on year or, or month uh, or month. Uh, no matter the, the rate at which the changes occur. Uh, is very, very significant because this is a product of sampling, it's a product of statistic, and it's a product also to guide policy makers on using certain minute, uh, um, either monetary or fiscal instrument uh, to bring stability to general price level. Uh, in, on my own opinion, again, uh, it is not realistic uh, based on the fact that it is a figure that is just showing uh, a sampling that was taken. And also it is significant when you check uh, 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 the, the, the harvesting period whereby a lot of food items are coming out from the farm. And at the same time also, there has been a lot of uh, adjustment in policy measures in terms of food uh, importation as well as uh, food waivers that has been granted by the federal government within 150 days. And this is the result that we expect to be seeing, but uh, drastic measures and other policies that can assist uh, uh, to bring about more stabilization and general price level is highly uh, needed for the economy at this time. Hmm. So, I mean, for the first time in a long time, 19 months, this is the first time inflation rate has reduced. Is this a good omen that things are heading in the right direction? No, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good, it's a very good point to start with, uh, for particularly that we are in the harvesting period. Remember, what is uh, disturbing most of the household in Nigeria is food inflation. And like I said initially, uh, it's, it's a good indicator that if uh, adequate, uh, efficient uh, policy measures are adopted, uh, prices will, will, will begin to change. And we are expecting that to be changing because there has been good attempt by the Mr. President to address uh, uh, issues that con that concerns inflation, which is also obviously uh, directly affecting each and every household in Nigeria. So do you think there are any other indicators that we should look out for? Of course, yes. Uh, the, you know, 
geometrically, uh, if you look at the structure of our population, you look at the size of the population, you will know that there is a lot of food requirement to be consumed by different consumers in this economy. Uh, many consumers are not afford, uh, cannot afford uh, basic food items in the market. And that is why uh, sometimes when you look at the indices that is guiding the dropping of inflation, uh, you have to also look at the effective demand side, where you look at the purchasing power of individuals, and the, 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 the financial stability of households. These are some of the measures that will now bring prosperity. Uh, reducing inflation is a good factor. Reducing unemployment is a good factor. Increasing uh, other, other economic parameters that is associated with purchasing power is also very significant. Mm. Let, me, let me give you precisely uh, at the angle at which we must be looking into uh, 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 talking about prosperity and growth in an economy. You must know the volume of consumers. You must know also the capacity of the consumers you must also know the the the, the, the financial strength of, of of each and every household as far as consumption is concerned because consumers consumes differently consumers consume with effective demand consumers consume with an income these are good parameters to look at the prosperity that we are looking for therefore there is need for 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 at a different level of, uh, of of policy makers right from the uh, uh, local 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 government level to the state to the federal to look at how to empower a lot of individuals either in terms of job either in terms of good employment either in terms of full employment all these things are required to put prosperity on the tables of nigerians all right i appreciate you thank you so much you shall for joining us Th Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you. All right. Moving on from that story, the National Association of Resident Doctors has urged the federal government and security agencies to immediately rescue their colleague, Ganiat Popola, who has been missing for seven months following her abduction in Kaduna. Popola, a medical practitioner at the National Eye Care Kaduna, was kidnapped along with her husband and visiting nephew by suspected bandits on December 27, 2023, at a staff quarters. Bella Musa has more. With pens written on their faces, the doctors took to the street on a peaceful protest at the National Eye Care Center Kaduna and warning that if their colleague is not rescued promptly, they will be forced to initiate a nationwide industrial action. President of the National Eye Care Center Kaduna branch, Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim, led the protest and called on security agencies to redouble their effort in securing the release of Dr. Popola and her nephew. He noted that Popola's husband had been released due to his deteriorating health. Unfortunately, as we speak, it's been almost eight months in a few days. Only the husband has been released on the ground of deteriorating health condition after over two months of continuous negotiation by the family. Last we know, Dr. Popola is alive but in a very poor health condition. Um, this should not be happening in a country where doctors are needed because of low doctor-to-patient ratio. If the corporal law is not released unconditionally, the association cannot guarantee any industrial harmony. So it's really a very painful uh, uh, issue for us. You know, hearing that they sleep under, the rain, the shine, uh, mosquito bites, they are fed once in three days as if they are in a dungeon. It's really in your own country. The acting medical director of the center, Aminatu Abdurrahman, lamented the ongoing exodus of medical professionals from Nigeria due to safety and welfare issues. Life has become so expensive, you know, with the uh, fuel subsidy gone with the rise in electricity tariff, with the depreciation in the value of the Naira. So any little money anybody is earning in whatever capacity can do much, much less. 
it's more glaring in the health sector because these are professionals that are very critical. But in every other sector, people who have skills that they can take to other countries and be paid for them, they are living in droves. Who will stay now and build this country when the best have left? She urged security agencies and other stakeholders to intensify effort to rescue the abducted doctor, highlighting that such prolonged abductions are unacceptable in a country known for its military strength. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. The Kenya State Police Command has arrested two suspects linked to the theft of a signpost from the Bacharawa Police Station in Ungogo local government area. The theft captured in a viral video during the violent escalating or escalation of the hash and bad governance protest showed one suspect dragging the stolen signpost, prompting widespread condemnation. The initially peaceful protest turned violent, resulting in five individuals being shot during the confrontation with police. The arrests were confirmed by SP Abdullah Hikiawa, the Kenu State Police Command spokesperson, who noted that the suspects were apprehended with help from local residents. Kiawa, in a statement posted on Facebook, praised the community for their cooperation, including the installation of a new signpost at the police station. The police have expressed gratitude to the Bacharawa residents for their support and reiterated their commitment to justice and maintaining peace. The suspects are expected to face charges in court as investigations continue. The Plateau State Government has fully lifted the curfew imposed on the Jos Bukuru Metropolis following the peaceful conduct of residents and an improvement in the security situation. In a statement by the Director of Press and Public Affairs, Gyang Berry, Governor Caleb Motwang said the move came after thorough consultations with security agencies. He said this will allow citizens to resume their economic and lawful activities while maintaining public order. Governor Motwang expressed gratitude to the citizens for their steadfast patriotism and cooperation during the challenging period and assured them of his unwavering commitment to their well-being. Mutuang also commended the security personnel for their dedication and effective enforcement of the curfew. The Plateau governor is calling for continued collaboration between resident and security agencies in ensuring the safety of lives and property across the state. The leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress, the NLC, on Thursday asked the federal government and the police high command to immediately release all arrested Nigerians that were involved in the just-concluded hash and bad governance protest. It also demanded immediate apologies from the duo over the recent invasion of the headquarters of the NLC by the security operatives, adding that it would hold the Nigerian police force responsible for any incident at the building. The head of information at NLC headquarters, Benson Upa, told journalists at a press briefing in Abuja that the government should stop criminalizing lawful protests as well as put an end to the continued harassment of people who hold dissenting views to the government. The NLC official said members of the organized labor reject the police explanation for the invasion of Secretariat, wondering why police would say they were terrorists among its members. The NLC also criticized government's attempt to interfere with the organization's internal affairs, including a proposed reduction in the tenure of trade union leaders, arguing that this violates labor laws and international conventions. In health. The Nigerian Center for Disease Control and Prevention on Thursday said Nigeria had recorded a total of 39 confirmed cases of MPOX and zero deaths across 33 states and the federal capital territory since the beginning of 2024. The NDDC Director General Jide Idris, who disclosed this at a press conference in Abuja, also said the country had so far recorded a total of 5,951 suspected cases while 176 deaths have been recorded across 36 states and the FCT as of August 11, 2024. 
the African Center for Disease Control on Tuesday declared a public health emergency over the growing Mpox outbreak on the continent. The outbreak has swept through several African countries, particularly the Democratic Republic of Congo. There is a serious and growing outbreak in the Democratic Republic of the Congo that has now expanded outside the country. A new viral strain, which first emerged in September 2023, has for the first time been detected outside DRC. So far, about 2,863 confirmed Mpox cases and 517 deaths across 13 African countries have been reported in 2024 alone. The National Judicial Council, NJC, has recommended Justice Kudirat Mutun Mori Kekere Kun to President Bola Metinubu for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Disclosing this in a statement on Thursday, NJC spokesman Soji Oye said the decision was taken following the Council's 106th meeting presided over by the CJN Justice Olukayo de Ariola. He said the meeting was held on August 14th and 15th in Abuja, just seven days before the retirement of Justice Ariola as the CJN. Justice Olu Kayode Ariola was appointed as the CJN on September 21st, 2022, by former President Muhammad Buhari. He is built to bow out on August 22nd, when he will attain the mandatory retirement age of 70. Already, the Supreme Court currently has the full complement of 21 justices. In the long tradition of the Apex Court, the next most senior justice will likely step in. And by their hierarchies, Justice Kudirat Kekere Kun is the most senior justice on the Apex Court bench and is the likeliest successor. The controversy surrounding the 573 billion naira disbursement to state has sparked significant debate between the federal government and various states' governments in Nigeria. President Bola Tinubu had during a national broadcast said the funds were provided to states as a form of hardship relief. However, some states have contested this claim, stating that these funds were not direct grants but reimbursement from the World Bank for expenditures the states had already made under specific conditions related to the NGKS program. Dr. Siakubuzala completes the report. On the 4th of August 2024, President Bola Ahmad Tinubu in a nationwide broadcast stated that 573 billion naira funds were released to the 36 states of the Federation as grants to cushion the economic hardship in the country. More than 517 billion has been released to the 36 states to expand livelihood support to their citizens. Why 600,000? nano businesses have benefited from our nano grants an additional 400,000 more nano businesses are expected to benefit these however has packed reactions from nigerians after some governors including those of oyo and nasarawa states countered the statement stating that the 573 billion naira is not a direct grant from the federal government but rather part of a world bank loan under the nigeria covid 19 action recovery and economic stimulus ngcares program the statements have intensified the call for clearer communication from the federal government regarding financial disbursements and nature of such funds. This huge sum of monies were given and nobody informed Nigerians. These were not gifts given to their governors or their family members. This is public funds and it is loan, repayable, and it's going to be paid by the Nigerian people. And it was secretly disbursed. There was even no news about it until when Nigerians decided to hit the streets and demand accountability that in a panic response, we now had that, oh, we have given the governors 570 billion. From the evidence available, it clearly shows that the federal government did not give the states money, you know, in the sense that the federal government made it look like it was a grant from the federal government. These were refunds from, I think it's the United Nations, 
to the Nigerian government, of course, the six states of the Federation, including FCT, on their expenditures during the COVID. This discrepancy has led to confusion and criticism with some citizens questioning the transparency of the government's financial dealings. There is need for transparency between the arms of uh, government. Uh, one such uh, disbursement is made. There is need for publication, you know, to state categorically this is what this money are meant for. The Oyo State Governor is PDP. The Nasrawa State Governor is APC. So we don't even know who to believe anymore. But I think I choose to align myself with the governors. If you say you gave such amount of money, you provide the proof, the evidence. You cannot just come and tell Nigerians, I gave so, 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 so amount of money without anything to show for. We have grown past that level. The president, if he's sure what he's saying, should come out to refute it and let's see evidence. Because we are living in, a, in, a, in an age where uh, for whatever you, you say, that it should be backed up by evidence. The broader implications of this controversy touch on the challenges of managing public perception and the importance of clear communication in governance. With the country facing severe economic challenges, the need for accurate information has become more critical than ever. Dokas Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Ogun State's government on Thursday faulted the judicial process that led to the provisional attachment of three Nigerian government-owned aircraft in France by the Judicial Court of Paris on 7th March and 2nd August 2024. A Chinese company, Zongshang Fusheng Industrial Investment Co. that Limited, had sought several orders from the court over an aborted underlying contract between the company and Ogun State government, which was initiated in 2007. In a statement signed by the special advisor to the governor on media and strategy, Kayode Akimade, the Ogun State government described the latest development as the new antics by the Chinese company to appropriate Nigerian assets in foreign jurisdictions as part of efforts, and that effort had continually failed. The statement prescribed or described the whole legal process as nothing but a total charade with fraudulent notion, adding that the company deliberately concealed the litigation from both the Nigerian government and Ogun State, as well as their legal counsels before hurriedly securing others of seizure. It added that the company must have misled the Judicial Court of Paris as of to the use and nature of the assets it sought to attach and not made full disclosure to the court as required by law. In the meantime, the federal government of Nigeria has co-accused the Chinese company Zongsheng Fusheng Industrial Investment Co. That Limited of subterfuge after a French court ruled in favor of the firm and granted the seizure of presidential jets belonging to the Nigerian government. In a statement on Thursday, presidential spokesman Bayo Onanuga alleged that the Chinese firm is trying to take over offshore assets of the federal government of Nigeria through subterfuge. In the dispute involving an arbitration award, the court in Paris ruled in favor of the Chinese firm, allowing it to seize three presidential jets on routine maintenance in France as security for claims in a decades-long judicial matter between the foreign company and the Ogun state government. Moving on to more stories, a bus belonging to the Lagos State Regulated Bus Rapid Transit traveling from Mile 2 Terminal to Lagos Island was on Thursday attacked by suspected hoodlums. The incident occurred around Alaba Suru where occupants were robbed of their belongings. A video of the attack, which began trending on Thursday, showed that the window glasses of the bus were shattered by the hoodlums. In a reaction, the senior special assistant on new media to the Lagos State's Governor Jabril Gawat announced that the Lagos State Tax Force, led by CSP Tayo Akerele, has deployed security officers in the BRT routes across the state, starting from the Alaba Suru area where the attack occurred. Going to the island, all of a sudden the incident happened. There were a lot of boys throwing stones at the boats where we were loading. There were passengers as well going down to the island. 
we just actually there was traffic so we thought there was normal traffic so we were going all of a sudden we saw boys plenty of them coming down from Ogile coming down to Alaba so the next thing they stopped the first three buses before ahead of us then they faced the BRT buses they said I'm a bus agent I want it I want it then they start shedding the bus train stone this is what happened this is the bus so that's the video video so everybody was robbed inside the bus as well we were all robbed collected our phone I have to use someone else's phone some of the staff was injured, the POS, the vendors as well. So now the enforcement was there. So we had... A little over one year since the emergence of a new government in the country, some politicians who were opposing the ruling party are beginning to tilt towards its direction. While politicians say it is it's their right to enshrine a Nigerian's constitution to freely associate with any political organization, political analysts warn that the development is negatively affecting the democratic process and the country's development at large. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli reports. Politics in the country has over the years been seen as driving not by ideology, but pecuniary interests of the practitioners as politicians often switch from one party to another. While some have attributed this to the attraction of appointments and other personal gains, others or find that the switch could be driven by internal party crises, fear of falling into irrelevance and deliberate fortune by the ruling party. Uh, the mem members of the uh, Senate, House of Representatives, House of Assembly, uh, they are elected into this office to serve a particular tenure and they are sponsored by a political party. And therefore, it presupposes that being sponsored by a political party, they are supposed to serve the tenure within that, that space of time that the, the constitution allowed. But in section 68 of the 1999 constitution, sub 1 following, and then section 109 of the 1999 constitution provides that if for, for as long as you are being elected into office on a particular platform, you're supposed to serve that term, the four year term, on that platform without the campaign. For any reason, if there should be a reason for anybody to decamp from his political party that sponsored him, to so uh, be on that particular seat, the constitution provided clearly the only condition that the person might become. It will only be when that particular political party that sponsors him either dissolve or merge into another political party for, for some obvious reason within that particular tenure, or that within the period in time there has been so much faction from the national level of that particular party so that they, there was a there is a divide. Those are the only proviso that gives a leeway for any member of either Senate, House of Reps, or the State House of Assembly that, that will warrant the person decamping. For political analysts, voters must be blamed for trusting politicians that often decamp from one party to other. They want voters to use their ballot right to hold such attitudes. De defecting from one party to another or decamping from one party to another is becoming an order of the day. And more often than not, people encourage that. Why? Because even if a candidate defects, you find that they will follow him and vote for him. And this is very dangerous for democracy and is not helping democracy, particularly party politics. So therefore, my call here is the electorate should be careful of encouraging defection from one party to another because it's not a good symptom it's not a good sign of democracy it shows lack of maturity in democracy and that is why leaders are not accountable our democracy is not paying the dividends it is expected to pay and we are seen under development here and there with most voters not considering the ideology of candidates and parties while casting their votes, this trend and others will continue affecting Nigeria's democratic system as pointed out by political scientists. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli, reporting for Trust TV. 
The senator representing Bauchi South Senatorial District, Shehu Umar Buba, says he has accepted his removal as the traditional title holder of Majida Limbauchi by the Bauchi Emirate Council in good faith. The Bauchi Emirates Council had in a letter dated August 14th, 2023, and addressed to Senator Buba, signed by Nasser Musa on behalf of its secretary, accused Senator Buba of disrespecting and humiliating the Bauchi state governor. Actions, it said, were at variance with the teachings and culture of Bauchi Emirate. But in the letter of reply dated 14th of August 2024, Shehu Umar Buba said he accepts their decision in good faith, hoping that Almighty Allah will send a messiah to Bauchi State to correct the situation in due time. The senator explained that upon hearing Governor Bella's disparaging comments about the president Bola Tinubu, he felt a strong duty to defend the president against what he perceived as calculated attempts to tarnish his reputation and sow public discord. Bubo added that Governor Bella's rhetoric, as captured in various multimedia content, was confrontational, accusatory, abusive, and defamatory, including emotive language aimed at threatening national security as they appealed to emotions rather than reason. Salem Bauchi, Governor Bala Mohammed of Bauchi State, has swallowed his recent comment on Tinubu's policies and programs credited to him during the recent hash and bad governance nationwide hunger protests in the state. The governor stated this on Thursday in Bauchi during a courtesy visit by the Minister of Works, David Umahi, to ascertain the level of destruction caused by the recent flood in the state. Bala said he has no intention to malign anybody, but has no, so much respect for president and the federal government as a whole. Speaking earlier, the Minister of Works, David Umahi, told the governor that the visit to the state was to commiserate with the people of Bauchi over the recent flood that ravaged many communities in the northern part of the state. The minister added that they are working hard to ensure that Nigerians are taken out of the present economic hardship across the country. You cannot blame Mr. President for not blaming you as a or you as a minister, or even the candidates, because it is all uh, about leadership. And I'm happy with the kind of conclusion. And Mr. President, the doing of organized our leadership <coughs> contribution to MLE and inspection because roads are meant to suck. President has taken quite the eye of religious issues. Uh, but it may not be very much clear to uh, the citizens, especially those who are not deeply exposed. And uh, when you have somebody that is sick, the first thing you do is to give a first aid and then you begin to do tests to find out the problems. But the important thing is that the president, the Democrats, you know, knows everything about you know the situation of the country. After weeks of minimal rainfall across Adamawa State and other regions of Nigeria, crops are wilting under drought conditions. Climate experts are raising alarms, warning that without immediate action, human activities could trigger a devastating hunger crisis across the country. Gibson Swadigo reports from Yola. It's August, a month typically marked by heavy rains. Yet, there has been a weeks-long dry spell. Hassan Adamu, a 63-year-old farmer from Yule South, is grappling with drought conditions that are threatening his livelihood. Having farmed for over five decades, Adamu is deeply concerned about this year's erratic rainfall, a worry shared by many farmers in the region. But this time last year, my rice farm was in good condition. But this year, the situation is bad. Bad 
this is the plea echoing from every farmer in the state and beyond, driving them to seek divine intervention in the face of worsening drought conditions. <laughs> In August, we usually have heavy downpours, but this time around, it is a different story and we are not happy. The impact of climate change, driven by human activities, is severely affecting crops and leaving farmers in a precarious situation. This crisis comes as inflation already stained many Nigerian families financially. Experts warn that the inconsistent rainfall could lead to a significant food shortage. It's really unfortunate that we are in the present state of where we are. Of course, it's worrisome. And uh, we've been trying to advocate for state actors, non-state actors, critical stakeholders to look at the question of uh, climate change as a menace. I'm not very sure if we can be able to have it going smoothly next year, looking at what is happening this year, especially in the rain, okay, the heat, and also what is even happening to our animals. So definitely, we really have to like kind of uh, start thinking outside the box. As farmers like Adamu continue to seek divine intervention, Experts urge both government and non-governmental organizations to step in and address this global issue. We've turned ourselves from our traditional system. We have some crops that are actually adaptable to this relative, but we've deviated from them. We, our cropping system have concentrated largely on rice and maize. Now that the rain is not feasible, now that what we used to have naturally coming down from heaven is no longer coming down the way we want it. We have to find an option. And what option do we need to do? That means we have to go back and draw a different plan, maybe integrate irrigation farming in our farming activities. For Adamo and his peers, shifting rainfall patterns may necessitate finding new sources of livelihood. Gibson so to go. Trust TV News, Yola. The National Emergency Management Agency had advised communities at risks of flooding, especially those residing along waterways, to relocate to safer and higher grounds in anticipation of the peak of the rainy season. This is as the agency released alarming data from its emergency operations center, revealing that severe flooding has affected 27 states. NEMA Director General Zubaida Umar reaffirmed the commitment of the agency to coordinate and provide necessary support towards efficient disaster management in the country. A Thursday press release on NEMA's ex-handle said the agency has rapidly mobilized efforts to assess the damage. It added that the agency is also coordinating relief operations with state emergency management agencies, SEMAS. NEMA in the national and sta in the statement assured that it will keep raising awareness nationwide about solid waste management to encourage clearing blocked drainages. No fewer than 17 people have been killed, while 227 um, in sustained minor injuries as a result of severe flooding that is closed and displaced 18.457 people across the 16 local government areas of Yobe State. The Executive Secretary of Yobe State Emergency Management Agency, Yosema Mohamed Goji, confirmed this when the agency's team visited Karasua, Yusufari, Machina, and Unguru local government area to commiserate with victims of the flood disaster. He said the SEMA's team has conducted a rapid needs assessment in the 16 affected local government areas where 5,953 households, which contained 18,000, 457 people in the 208 communities were affected. 
He added that from April 2024 to date, at least 227 people sustained injuries but have been treated free and discharged. According to him, the majority of the affected communities have reintegrated into the host community, while others displaced by the disaster are currently taking refuge with relatives as well as in government buildings. He also advocates for resources to clear waterways through relevant MDAs and as well plans for a lasting solution for places that have a recurring history of flooding and blockage. Heavy and torrential rainfall in some parts of Kirikasama local government area of Jagawa State has killed six children and injured others. The information officer of Mala Madori and Kiri Kasama local government areas, Musa Muhammad, said a resident of Gamji village, Yahya Gamji, Gamji's four children reportedly died after their house collapsed on them at midnight in Turabu ward of Kiri Kasama local government area. Similarly, two persons were reported dead as a result of incessant rainfall after houses fell on them at Fundi village all in Kiri Kasama local government area. A traditional title holder, Omaria Kubo Mogadis, disclosed that the two deceased persons in funding were submerged on the rooms that collapsed on them. The Director of Administration and General Services of Kiri Kasama local government area, Idris Gambo Abubakar, has commiserated with the families of the deceased victims, adding that those who got serious injuries were admitted at the nearest hospital for urgent treatment. He further directed the officers concerned to compile a comprehensive report on the incident for urgent action and assistance from the state emergency management agency, SEMA. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on News R. It is now time for business news update with Yusuf Akug. Welcome to business news. I am Yusuf Akogu. Nigeria's fast-moving consumer goods sector has declined by 17.4% in transaction volume as of March 2024 from 14% decrease recorded in 2023. Latest Nelson IQ report indicate that the sector is grappling with a substantial decline in transaction volume due to economic strain caused by escalating inflation. Analysts say this trend indicates that consumers are purchasing less, their expenditure on essential goods has risen contributing to the overall growth of the market. This sharp decline underscores the severe economic challenges facing the country. Lagos, Rivers and Kano states are Nigeria's leading hubs for micro, small, medium enterprises. According to the new PwC report, the concentration of MSME in this economically active region is driven by infrastructure, market access and business ecosystem. The report titled Building Resilience, Strategies for MSME Success in a Changing Landscape revealed that a survey of 567 MSME across 13 sectors ranked Lagos as the state with the highest concentration, accounting for 7.3% of MSMEs, followed by River State with 6.8% and Kano State with 6.4%. According to the report, Lagos is the leading hub for MSMEs in Nigeria with its population of over 20 million and strong infrastructure which attract entrepreneurs. River State wealth from natural resources has driven infrastructural development creating a solid business foundation, why Kano, large uh, dynamic market, draws in small businesses. NGS closed Thursday trading in red as investors trade cautiously. So let's see how it went down this uh, Thursday. Orlando PLC lead the losers there down 9.94% to close at 32 naira and 60 kobo per share. Of course, ABC Transport also down 9.52% to close at 76 kobo per share. Of course, Livestock Feeds also down 9.09% to close at 2 naira and 20 kobo per share. Of course, this has dragged down the market downward marginally though by 0.01% volume of trade to 71.26 million shares valued at 3 0.522 billion error in the of 7,233 did exchanges among investors today. Of course, top trading equities in terms of volume leading that table is Veritas Capital at 3.39 million shares. It traded Stalin Bank Nigerian PLC 16.65 million shares. Of course, Ico Insurance 16.37 million shares. It traded as well. Of course, some equities recorded gains at the close of business today. Leading that table is NIMET. NIMET gained 9.55% to close at 2 naira and 18 copper per share. Of course, total PLC also up there 8.82% to close at 511 naira and 90 copper per share of course. Ico Insurance also ended on a gaining side.
side of the market uh, gained 6.54 percent to close at one naira and 14 cobo per share day and that's the highlight of stock trading as it went down this thursday on the floor of ngs let's see the global stock market and exchange rate data for today <music> Oil prices rose after a two-day slump fueled by worries about potential conflict in the Middle East following the killing of a Hamas leader. This price increase came despite a surprise inventory build reported by the EIA and lower oil demand indicators from China. Hope for a U.S. rate cut due to lower inflation data also provided some support for oil prices. At the London market, Brent crude sells for $80 per barrel. For the pair basket, price increases to $80 per barrel. And that's business. I am Yusuf Akogu. Thank you, Yusuf Akogu, for that. And from the international scene, President Bola Tinubu and Equatorial Guinea President Teodoro Ngbasogo on Wednesday evening in Malabo signed an agreement on the Gulf of Guinea pipeline project further affirming the partnership for mutual development. This is according to a Thursday statement by presidential spokesman Ajiri Glali. He said the agreement covered legislative and regulatory measures for the gas line, the gas pipeline, establishment and operation, transit of natural gas, ownership of the gas pipeline and general principles. In his remarks at the event, President Tinubu, who is on a three-day official visit to Equatorial Guinea, said the signing of the agreement will open up new opportunities for gas exploration and employment. The president stated that the two leaders had discussed issues related to the creation of employment, food security, multilateral relations, and conflict resolution mechanisms on the continent during a private meeting that preceded the signing of the agreement. In his remarks, the president of Equatorial Guinea said bilateral relations with Nigeria over many years have been rewarding and emphasized the need to deepen cooperation across salient areas. The World Health Organization says an accumulative total of 307,433 cholera cases and 2,326 dead were reported from 26 countries between January and July this year. According to WHO, the Eastern Mediterranean region recorded the highest numbers, followed by the African region, the Southeast Asia region, and the region of the Americas and the European region. The world body admitted that cholera response is facing significant challenges due to a severe shortage of oral cholera vaccine, the OCV, with demand far exceeding supply. It stated that since January 2023, 18 countries have requested 105 million doses, nearly double the 55 million doses produced during this period. Given the increasing number of outbreaks, their geographic spread and the ongoing vaccine and resource shortages, WHO says it continues to access the global risks as very high, maintaining the grade 3 emergency status. The WHO said warming temperatures that allow the cholera bacteria to live longer have worsened outbreaks and led to the highest death rates in a decade. And now let's join Adeni Adishafe for sports news update. The federal government has flagged off an annual sport fiesta tagged federal education sector gains Fedu Games to promote unity, friendship and synergy among stakeholders. The Federal Education Agency game, which kicked off in Bauchi, has participants competing in different sports, especially football and athletics for five days. During the opening ceremony, Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohamed, represented by his Chief of Staff, Aminu Gamawa, acknowledged the role of sport in fostering unity and called on the participants to use the opportunity to build networks and explore the tourism sites in the state. Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, represented by the Director I sit in the Ministry, Issa Abubakar, says sport has become a viable economic empowerment tool, as well as a bridge for peace building and conflict resolution, hence the need to embrace it. 
Youth ministries, department and agencies, MDAs at the national and subnational levels to use sport as a source of economic empowerment in order to improve the livelihood of young and senior citizens for nation building. 2024 federal games have various athletes representing the departments and agencies in football, athletics, chairs, scrabble, volleyball, handball, badminton, and more. Footballer Mustafa appreciates Bauchi State Government as a host of 2024 Fedu Games. As a team, NUC, NUC team, we are here for these games, football, volleyball, badminton, and other uh, indoor games. And we are hopeful that we will win medals and medals and medals. <laughs> Ibrahim Adeyemi, a basketballer with the Federal Ministry of Education, expects better planning in the schedules of the games. At least there's supposed to be an interval like a day break or something like that before you can recover, before you are actually to play another game. So I think in their next event, if they want to organize, I think they should they need to work on that in that aspect. Meanwhile, chess and scrabble player, Priska Nwanko is hoping for more in terms of hosting of the game. I was expecting to see the stadium renovated, I was expecting to see good, good things, but I'm surprised when we came in, we still saw the old Bauchi Stadium, you know? So, in fact, it's not encouraging, but for the games itself, the games are really going on. We are, those of us that are here, we are encouraged, we are happy, and we look forward to attending next Federal Game too. 23 agencies under the Federal Ministry of Education are participating in 2024 Fair Games. That's Sport News. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. And with that, we wrap up Trust News R. Ah, do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you so much for watching. Good evening. So I want